Today we'll be looking at the Power Plasma 60. This is an inverter based unit. It's powered with IGB electronics making it lightweight, powerful, and easy to use. The Everlast Power Plasma 60 is a fully featured machine. Starting with the air pressure gauge mounted in the front, you are able to see the air pressure at all times from the front of the machine. The air pressure control is right here. It is pushed in currently to lock it, but pull it out, twist it either direction to the right to increase the pressure or to the left to lower the pressure. When you get done, push the button in to lock it in place. We have the digital readout right here. You're able to accurately adjust your amperage to meet the demands of the metal that you're cutting. Here is the power controls switch. You can turn it down to 20 amps. You can turn it all the way up to 60 amps. There's stepless adjustment. This is the post flow switch. Right here you turn it on to time flow and you have control over how long your post flow lasts after you're using uh, the cutter for extended amounts of time. You want to increase the amount of post flow. If it's short, quick cuts, low amperage, or you have, uh, you have a thin metal, then you want to turn it down because you don't need as much to cool the consumables. If you need to test the air pressure for any reason, while you're setting up the machine, you turn the constant flow on, the gas or the air will escape from the end of the torch constantly until you turn it back to time flow. The lower part of the Power Plasma 60 panel is pretty self-explanatory. You'll see the workpiece, which is, some people call it your ground clamp, but technically it's your work clamp or your workpiece. You have the fuse for your high frequency. You have the torch switch control. You have a pilot arc wire. And you have the main torch. Now to connect your workpiece, you simply take your Denzi connector, 3 8 push it in, and twist and turn to lock it in place. Now, you have your torch switch control, which has a detent in it, right here. It's a little U-shaped piece. At the bottom of there, there is a uh, matching groove right there. Take it, push it in, match it up, tighten it down finger tight. No sense in getting too tight with it. Now you have your pilot arc, unscrew your thumb screw, take your pilot arc wire, put it on there, and then simply tighten the thumb screw down, again, finger tight. Now, you take your torch connector right here, you take it, you screw it on here. Now we've had some people take wrenches and put a lot of pressure on it, but that's not necessary. All you have to do is finger tight and makes a good seal with the inverted flare feed. Okay, this is the rear of the panel. If you'll notice, this is the switch right here. Heavy duty double pole switch. This is the air filter or the air water trap. Now, we have a lot of customers who hook this up backwards. There is an arrow right here that shows you the direction of the airflow. So the air goes in here, comes out here, goes to the bottom of the machine. Now we also have a bolt right here. People say, what's that bolt for? The bolt's for high frequency ground. Does it have to have it? No. But that high frequency ground is there in case you uh, begin to experience interference with fluorescent lights, computers, or any kind of sensitive electronic equipment. It prevents the high frequency in the machine from disturbing it. Now here we have our work clamp. Like I said, some people call it a ground clamp, but technically it's a work clamp. You need to make sure that your connection is tight here. That you've got a good connection here. You have a copper strap inside which uh, joins the two together. If it's cut or broken, you may not get a good connection. And if, you're, if your unit's not cutting good, you need to make sure that this right here is in good shape and it's making good connection. 
Now this is the Power Plasma 60, 60 amp cutting torch. Now we have a switch on top right here and you have two zip ties that hold the switch on. Now some people say I don't like the zip ties but this allows you to twist or turn or reinstall the switch wherever you want to have it to make it the most comfortable for you. You can put it on top or you can put it on the bottom whatever you're most comfortable with. You can move it forward or you can move it backwards just depending on your hand, the size of your grip or whatever that you have that you need to accommodate a different position. Now, we have a wire standoff right here. I recommend keeping the wire standoff on there while you're cutting stuff that is over 3 eighths of an inch. Don't drag cut. Now, you can drag cut under 3 eighths of an inch and under 30 amps. Now, to open this up, we're going to show you this is the ceramic cup. This is your chrome nozzle and there is your chrome contact piece. Just simply screw out, take it out, put it back in, make sure it's tight, screw this on, make sure it's tight, screw your ceramic cut back on and make sure it's tight. A piece of 16 gauge rusted steel there that we've already started demonstrating on but we're going to show it to you live in real time. Next we have the expanded metal. This is 3 quarter by 9. Uh, most difficult thing to do when you're plasma, plasma cutting is cut expanded metal. But thanks to the pilot arc that we have, it actually makes a very quick and easy job of it. And last but not least, we have some 3 8 plate here. We've got some fresh 3 8 plate. And we also have some old rusted weathered 3 8 plate which is pretty heavily oxidized with rust, has some paint on it. We're going to cut right through that. We're going to use that little fence guide there we have, and we're going to cut a nice, clean, straight cut. Hey.